Welcome to Deadlands Dime Novels, The Adventures of Young and Holt, Issue 32, Meet Patchy. I'm your narrator, Ernest Wick, intrepid reporter for the Tombstone Epitaph. In this issue, Porter and Regina spend some quality time together, and then return the favor of a meal to old friends. Joshua gets down to business and goes on a fateful mission with Reddington. It's the calm before the storm, so we best see where they're at. Uh, Porter, what are you going to do during this day? If any... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to ask what Regina would like to do, because she's been stuck here wandering with me. I got to go out and see the sights. She didn't. And so I would probably escort her around town. Hearing um, your ghost stories. Yeah, hearing uh, <laughs> and getting stories of what I've been doing. And well, again, except this time with a different little twist. I might go into a little more detail, like when I touched the giant uh, bone or what I saw, uh, I might hold back on Wild Bill. Make me a spirit roll, then let's see how these uh, how these stories. Is there a get out from under the bus roll? <laughs> well, four. She is interested. She does listen to them. She finds the one about the giants particularly fascinating. It's particularly the part about the the deer seeming to be so much smaller. Yeah. And she goes back in. Is it you know? Are you sure that? Was it really that much of a size difference? It. That's what I saw. That I mean, I, I don't know if these are, you know, direct what they saw or if it's just feelings they had. I just go by what I, I assume it's true. And they lived in this area even before the Indians did then. Is that, I mean, that, is, was that kind of what you felt? That's, that's what I thought, yeah. Wow. Hmm. For as long as those burial sites have been there. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. That that one is that one's fascinating. It's uh Are you gonna tell her about the, the barn? And the body? The bodies, I mean? Yeah, because it relates to the giant's tail, because they're okay. put in the Lunchtime? Be a good time for the story. <laughs> well, I mean, I can tone back on the blood and gore a little. She, she is, she is, uh, she finds that one also fascinating as well, as it seems very much like a, uh, you know, some sort of burial ritual, right? Um, Which matched with the giants, so it, yeah. She does not ask about Wild Bill, though. No okay. cup. Uh, you spend the day, I would imagine, probably. Yep, eating lunch, walking around the town, getting a full... She wants to get a full feel for what this is, and you definitely pick up the sense, um, now that you've had a chance to go around, this is, uh, really is a boom town, but there is an overriding tension going on in regards to the threat of the Sioux, and it's strangely mixed with the excitement of, of getting Ghost Rock. It's a weird combination of, of, of feelings that you have. And uh, you likely uh, wind down the, the day uh, catching a, uh, a show that's before, that goes on before sundown. Okay. That is uh, quite entertaining. It is also from uh, Papa Sean's uh, Traveling Entertainment Extravaganza. Yeah. I'm sorry, Papa Shaw's, not Sean's. And she enjoys it uh, quite a bit. As far as her demeanor through the day, she seems to be a bit more accepting um, okay. of, of, of what you said. At one point, you're sitting there, and you're, you're probably finishing up, finishing up lunch. Wow. Do you have bad dreams? Sometimes. I mean, like, but do you think it's bad dreams? Not like somebody would have a nightmare, regular bad dreams. Do yours seem different? <clears throat> I mean... I don't have other people's bad dreams to compare them to. How bad are your dreams? Well, okay, you said you've just only been able to have this for a while. I, I, that I've known about, That you've known about. But it means, so, so before you realized you could do this, were your bad dreams different than they are now? I mean, I have 
some really bad dreams, but none that are, I mean, I don't, how bad are yours? <laughs> um, most of my bad dreams usually involve getting run over by a train. But, I've had a uh, couple of those. Yeah. You say that you, you, you go and you kind of, you play cards with these things. Yes. What happens when you lose? Usually something I don't want to happen. Like what? What, ha- what has happened to you? What's the worst thing that's happened to you when you lost? I told you about Annabelle, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you, when she caught me, I was... It was right after... I was hiding in the hay because I didn't want to fight her. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. Because she scared the daylights out of me. Yeah. And, uh... She doesn't sound like anybody who would want to fight her. Uh, you'd be, I'd, I'd tell Joshua, I'd walk right up to her, challenge her to a duel. <clears throat> was this at a time when he was drunk again? No, he he, he like... had been sleeping and walked right down the middle of the street. And... <laughs> you, know, you gotta be careful with that one. <laughs> um, but uh, I was gathering my wits about me and uh, calling it up in a way. I was I played a game mm-hmm. and. Uh, I lost, and the creature pulled me right out of the hay and right up to Annabelle, I think because it knew that was exactly what I didn't want to happen. So it was like it was working with it, or working with Annabelle? Maybe, or maybe it just wanted me to have a very bad time, Well, which I did. Yeah, well, considering what she shoved down your throat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's when I looked down at my food. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. I probably guess I shouldn't have asked that question. It, it's fine. Later in the day, you probably finished supper. You, uh... And I, I, I assume later on we're starting kind of waiting to hear from him because right. we have no idea what's going on at this point. You're, you will say that you're walking back down Main Street, heading back towards the Belly Union, and it's right about this time that Joshua comes riding up behind you or alongside of you on his horse um, after... Uh, I, I sidestep to get out of the way of the horse. And like, <laughs> as oh! He's, uh, right up next to you. Mm-hmm. Give you a little on your hat. Ah, oh, God damn it! Looks like you two are enjoying yourselves. Had a very good day, as a matter of fact. Where have you been? We don't need to get into that. Just know that we're all gonna have a very interesting night. Did the job go through? Yeah. The experiment. It's going to be tonight. Okay. Mm. North of town. How far north? Don't know, Rightly. Like the mining camp north? Could be. I'm supposed to meet him at sundown. Don't know if you uh, Do want you to know? ride that way early. Keep an eye out. No cop. Though I am supposed to prevent anybody from shooting at uh, Mr. <clears throat> and Joshua will spit out the words Reddington. <clears throat> Mr. <clears throat> Reddington. I uh, I may know a place I could visit um, out there. Do, do we do we want to? What about the? He kind of points over toward the Bell Union and. And a little down the you know through the wall well I reckon if uh, I'm supposed to be making sure nobody shoots at him I might be going down that way tonight we'll see okay might be easier to not follow though but get ahead of him all right maybe I can cut him off maybe I'll... and we still don't even know what this is no we don't Maybe I'll so head best, up and... best just to use discretion. Right. Nah, I know. <laughs> what I'm what you thinking, Porter? What the hell are you two talking about? <laughs> Alright, so spit it out. 
Maybe I'll uh, buy some food <laughs> and uh, offer to pay back a couple mining friends uh, for the breakfast. I'll pull the uh, Evans old model sporter rifle off my uh, horse. I'll basically pull that out and I'll look at Regina, look at the pistol on her side, look at the rifle. Does she catch it one-handed? She does catch it one-handed. I, I kind of uh, <laughs> a little in awe of that. <laughs> Last time it was tossed to me, I think I dropped it. <laughs> Best to keep your distance. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll stay by his side. Somebody's got to watch the back. That's going to be me. Martin. Just know that if you start shooting at me, I might have to start shooting back. D- what? Did you say something? Nope. Just make sure you miss. <laughs> you can ask Porter about me missing. He told me. Just make sure you miss. You might ask around at the mining camp if they've got anything for moving large rocks. What, like a rope? No. Something a little bigger. Maybe more than one stick. Uh, yeah. That might work I mean, better. I don't know rightly what we're up against here, but... If it's as big as, uh... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll, when I go get some food, I'll see if I can find some dynamite, too. And, uh, maybe pack them in things at three. Ma'am, Dandy, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, you can get some dynamite. However, it is a little bit more expensive. Nice. How many sticks do you want to actually get? Six. Two sets of three. Two bundles of three. And it will uh, cost you $25. Okay. Tuck my horse away before it gets sundown. By the time you secure those things, it's maybe about an hour before dusk. So, Porter, you and Regina are going up into the mining uh, camp area. You're going to go back to Jim and Elmer's tent? Yeah, even fine? if they're not there. Okay. Uh, if they're not there, in fact, I will start... Trying to cook. All right. Jim is there when you get there. And he's in the midst of arranging things inside the tent. And he comes out and sees the two of you as you approach. Oh! Well, uh, hi. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it actually... It, it, he leans in. It has actually been a good evening. Oh, actually, has it? Yeah, we, we, we came across a little bit of... Uh, of Ghost Rock. Elmer's actually staying out at the... Uh, make sure nothing bad happens. Yep, just to make sure everything's uh, safe and sound. I, I told him I'd come back here to the camp, secure everything, you know, take care of stuff here. He should be fine. I don't have nothing... I don't have too many worries about him. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, we finally... Uh, can't tell if it's going to be how productive of a vein it'll be, but uh, this uh, this could be good. Uh, what brings you out here? Came to repay the favor. Well, that was unnecessary, but it's very welcome. Now, you'll have to bear with me. I am not a good cook, but I'm sure you can help me out. I'd be more than happy to. I'd be more than happy to. I will just kind of make small talk with him, and I kind of want to lean him towards letting us take care of their camp and let have him go out to his mining spot to help uh, Jim just kind of relay some fears about him by himself out there all alone and stuff like that and uh, how things go bad if you don't have someone watching your back. You make an untrained persuasion, but I'll give you a plus two because you brought him dinner. All right. Take that. Virginia will actually try and assist. That explodes. I don't need that some. explodes. It's, I brought some really good food because that's a... It's minus two for untrained, right? Yes, but then the plus two... So it, it just cancels so, out. Yep. So that's eight. It's 11. It's 11. Regina doesn't even need to assist you. Um, <laughs> yeah, as you, as the food is made and it, it, it becomes darker and uh, you're eating, he's, he looks at you and he says, are you sure? Because, I mean, this isn't our tent. It's, it's, it's fine, but it's not the most comfortable of places. I, I've slept in much, much worse. He looks over at Regina and you don't mind sleeping in the hotel rooms and... No, 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 it's, it's good, it's good. Well, uh, Porter, I have to say, I'm, uh, I appreciate the kindness. It's, uh, yeah, I guess, well, there's just, it's the, 
smidge left of light here, and I'm gonna have to power up the old lantern. But uh, yeah, I thank you for that. I'll, I'll take what with the supplies I've got. Um, Good idea. Here, and so the only thing we really have to worry about is the tent. But it should be fine once morning time comes around. These get left alone pretty well. You should take some stew with you. I'm sure he's getting hungry out there. Elmer's going to appreciate that. Yeah, this was, um, this, and turned out not too bad with his assistance. That's good. <clears throat> well, yeah, he, he packs everything up and heads on out of camp. Now we can set up like it's our tent, and we're supposed to be here. Sitting at the bell, watching people drink, enjoying my coffee. Okay. Good. It's been 24 hours. Oh yeah. I'm gonna give you. Uh, I'm gonna give you a plus two on this. Okay. So it'll be a plus one. Okay. So it's five. So it gets about uh, dusk, and uh, Ike comes walking in, <clears throat> sees you, comes sits back down. Join me in a drink. <laughs> That's a nice, impressive show. I'm good. How did everything go with Penelope today? Well, let's just say we worked it out. All right. Care to share it all? Not really. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Something's very deep. Best not to go poking around at him. Did you go digging for him? I didn't do any digging. Okay. All right, let's not worry about the past. I must, I must say that, you know, it, it did burn going up there, though. It rightly should, I guess. You know, but... Uh, I guess... Uh, <clears throat> quote my brother and say gotta just ride on and not look back <laughs> alright uh, so shall we uh, let's go with that coffee there you might have yourself a bright future my friend <laughs> so shall we go put up with some clicking <laughs> yeah He's uh, he's outside. He's waiting for us. I told him I'd come and check in here and see if you were in here. Just making sure you weren't drinking. And you're not. Well, well you are. I am. But, but I'm not. not. <laughs> All right. And did you want to taste this to make sure I didn't put anything in it? I'm going to choose to trust you on this one, Joshua. Your mistake. I mean, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's kind of the joke here. The jokes I remember. It's good to... Now let's just go. Yeah. You walk around outside, and Samuel Reddington is waiting there for you. Ah, good, good. Here. Mr. Reddington? Joshua, Ike. In, in anything now that we're on the job together, is there a, a better title that you want me to refer to you as, or...? If it uh, if it if it's necessary, I know Reddington can be a, a long name to say. So, if you must say Mr. R, if there's a, an emergency of sorts, that's just fine. Mr. R. Yes. Ah. So, he kind of tugs at his collar a bit and uh, puts his dominoes in the pocket. This would be the uh, part where we don't start asking questions; we just do. I make myself clear. Claire's River on a... Yeah. Ah, good. good. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I'm going to assume that's a regional colloquialism of some sort. He goes over to the side wall. You see him feeling around, and he finds something. It's a little tough to make out in the dark. But he, he presses, and the, the wall kind of pops a bit and he slides it down the stairs, gentlemen. <laughs> Ike goes down first. Oh. Look around. It's sure nobody's looking at us or pointing any guns our way because hey, that's my job now. You don't and see anything uh, unusual? After you, sir. I uh, know, I must shut the door. 
Ah. Head on down. And you hear it shut. It's dark, but there is a glow down the stairs, off in the distance a little bit. You, then you hear the sounds of a, of a lantern being lit behind you. And then uh, Samuel has that, and you can see it's a set of stairs down into dirt walls uh, underneath the Bella Union. You walk down in there, and there's a bit of a macabre scene that you see down here. And go ahead and make me a guts check at a minus two, but don't forget to add your grit. Five and three is eight, minus one is seven. There is uh, a number of things here that catch your uh, attention. There is a long table, and right now it is empty, but above that is a number of hooks, and there are straps and other things there. You can see a number of tubes coming down from some glass, um, whatever those glass type containers are, and there's liquid in them. Uh, but the tubes are tied off at the end. Over on the other side of the wall, yeah, like the big, like the big, you know, Hollywood movie mad scientist ah, type okay, gotcha. beakers, and there's some sort of, there's different colored fluids in, in, in the one has white, one has like a peach color, one has a red color. On the other side of the wall, and all the walls in here are dirt, is a number of uh, other hooks, and hanging on those uh, are various slabs of either meat, maybe perhaps pig. One of them does have a human leg that is hanging on there. Uh, the others have other, like, skins and things that are there as well. The, the, leg, the human leg is a bit disfigured. Away from that slightly is uh, a table with a number of strange gear, geared devices, uh, wind-up things. There is something you can't quite make it out that is behind it that's glowing uh, in a kind of a sick yellow kind of glow, and there's things blocking it so you can't quite see that. Against another wall there's a cabinet, and uh, Samuel goes immediately for that cabinet, but then you hear something behind you, and you turn. As I got down to the bottom of the stairs, I'm taking all this in. Okay. Um, I'm going to make a persuasion check, because I'm going to do like that shock, catch of the breath, <gasps> uh, confusion, uh, what the, you know, and then put on a good show, all basically. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna re-roll that. Re-roll that because that would be a um, uh, one. A one. Oh, look at it. Stayed on the thing. Oh, they put it down. Oh, oh my gosh. Three. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. We had these so. All right. So ten minus one is a nine to put on a good show of. I'm going to be kind of shocked and appalled, and. Concerned, confused, and be like, okay, this this is the job. Look at Ike and Ike just kind of just shake my head a little bit and I I look back looks back at you and he says, You get used to it. Just don't ask. And as Reddington who has his back to you as he's opening up the cabinet, it's fascinating, isn't it? It's something all right, sir. It is. It's uh, new science is an amazing field. The discovery and utilization of ghost rock has allowed us to do amazing, miraculous things, Joshua. In fact, turn around. You turn around, and on the far wall, away from you, you didn't see it until you got down here, there is a cage that's set up. And of course, one of the walls are still dirt, and but it is appears to be sunken into the ground a bit. Standing in there is an extremely large man. He's, his body proportions are huge. You can only see him essentially from the knee up. So you're guessing maybe eight, eight and a half feet tall. He's got on 
sort of a, a cloak of sorts, like a bad gunny sack style cloak. But as you look at where skin is, there are different patches, uh, including what looks like a couple of the patches are fur. You would swear otter fur or groundhog fur or something uh, to that nature. One of his hands looks like it ends in a bit of a claw. Maybe it's a bear claw, not sure, but he does appear to be predominantly human. He says, what do you think? He turn, he, and you turn back at that point and Reddington is fastening a belt around his coat and you can see as he kind of clips it in and he presses a couple of buttons. There's this like a little whirring noise and there's a small dim blue glow and it dims a little bit more. So it's just like lightly there. And then he pulls out this massive rifle looking thing that he kind of straps onto his back. He says, that, my boy, is patchy. Patchy? Yes. I know, I've know. seen some big fillers in my day, but not that big. Yes. Now, I know I said no questions, but uh, I, 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 just to, I just, I'm so proud of how well this worked. I mentioned the ghost rock. Patchy here, and he walks over to the cage. I, I'm going to play my um, villainous <laughs> verbosity card, yeah. which triggers the villain's monologue. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Because you can say that, because he's going to go off. And, um, Juicy details. He says, uh, oh, so you are going to play it? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So this will force him to, to give up a little bit more. <laughs> maybe, maybe he'll slip something about who he works for. Apache was nothing more than a mere skeleton just about a couple of short weeks ago. We found him, well, <clears throat> find being uh, a fluid word. We came upon him, acquired him, that would be a better word. We acquired Patchy's skull, skeleton, in uh, an ancient Indian burial mound out in uh, southern Minnesota, uh, northern Iowa territories, if I remember correctly. And <clears throat> there were rumors and tales of giants. If you could see, look, Patchy's actually standing in a hole. He's larger than all three of us. And uh, you look down, or you're still standing away, saying, no, 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 come, come, come. You look down, sure enough, he is standing in a hole. One of his, uh, bottom of his legs, it does appear to be a hoof, probably from a horse. But it's only from the shin down. And I'll get to that in a moment. So, we came across his skeleton, acquired it, and sure enough, the legends of giants walking the earth uh, back in, uh, back before, uh, before even the natives got here, as far as I can tell, but certainly before uh, Europeans set foot onto the, this American soil. But no, they, they, they roam these lands, these giants, these beings of massive size. Clearly, the proof is there in the skeleton. So, we took the skeleton, and using Ghost Rock, and I won't go into all the arcane formulas and, 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 and details of that, I don't want to bore you with it, but... Um, Combining it with some of the uh, fluids I have over there, the power of the ghost rock, the uh, uh, makeshift skin, and you'll notice there's bits and pieces here of uh, different animals. We have to, Patchy has to have a covering, of course. Uh, White, we're able to, uh, in essence, resurrect him, bring him back to life. And not only bring him back to life, but I have a, a, a modicum of control upon him. Now, should I lose that control, he'll just become a wild beast at that point. But, because uh, he does have a, uh, some semblance of free will. Don't you, Patchy? Patchy kind of nods his head a little bit, and you hear a little bit, a little groan kind of come from there. I'm still working out the details. Patchy is, as I said before, an experiment. Yes. Amazing! I know you're speechless. It's it's uh, uh, the horse. The horse. I guess. You did say no question, sir. Ah, yes. Uh, he looks like 
He does indeed follow orders. This is good. Yeah, I, I want to mention the, the horse thing. That was an unfortunate uh, problem. Uh, part of the skeleton became damaged. I found that when it was exposed to the sunlight, it would just turn to dust. And unfortunately, in, in the transportation, in the transportation of Apache skeleton, you know, that part got exposed. So we may do. I, I can see you desperately want to ask a question. Go ahead and ask me something. If I don't want to answer it, I won't. D. You think he's in pain? He can experience pain, yes. But uh, is he in pain? I don't believe so because he doesn't seem to exhibit any signs that he's in pain. Uh, and Patchy kind of starts walking back and forth. As you can see, he's uh, uh, he, he he gets around. He doesn't seem to be complaining. He does have a limp, but that's partially because of the horse. Like so. I believe my masters are going to be very pleased with how this works. Now, unfortunately, uh, if they would make me a bit more privy to some of the more finer details of their plans, I probably could have uh, come up with uh, something a bit better, but the success of Patchy here uh, should prove uh, my worthiness to them, and perhaps I'll get to know a bit more. But that's stories for another time. So I'll turn and look at the stairs we came down. Are they big enough? To accommodate him? Yes. Okay. So, uh, shall we go and uh, test Patchy out? You're, you're the boss, sir. Yes, I guess I was saying that rhetorically. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. He walks back over to the table, the large table that has the tubes, and he goes underneath and produces the helmet that you saw earlier. Uh, and... Uh, another item, and he walked back over. Uh, uh, I could be a good boy and unlock the cage. He goes over, grabs the keys off to the side, and unlocks it. Patchy comes out. He looks at you, and he just he just stares at you, and you can see his face begin to kind of scrunch a little bit. His face looks very odd because it looks like it is that there is stretched human skin over it, but it, it is bulging and puffing in areas where it shouldn't. So it's it's not elephant manish in that sense, but it is there's there's issues with his with his face. Yeah. Patchy come down here. Patchy kneels down. Greddington takes the helmet and puts it on puts it on his head. Ah yes. He adjusts it a little bit. Patchy can you see okay? Gives a little grunt and he pats the helmet. He says, "Got to protect the weak spot." And then look, give me these here, Patchy. Let's put these on you, and you can see on his one hand that that is a human hand. He puts on this massive pair of brass knuckles. There we go, Patchy. Let's go. He's walking out. We're going to go cause a little bit of trouble in the miners' camp. Now I am expecting there to be shots taken. At Patchy, um, I'm going to be testing to make sure that his vision with this helmet is still good, and uh, and that he will uh, uh, that the uh, helmet will be able to protect him quite well, and that he'll respond to. I've been fine tuning my 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 internal commands to him, uh, but I'll be worried about that part. So, are we good? I I nods. All right, so you walk up the stairs. Reddington leads the way, opens the door. Patchy gets up. Ike grabs this this kind of this large cloak type thing. Uh, looks like a big sheet or whatever. You get outside, or Reddington signals that it's okay, and you come out, shuts the door. Ike has you help him throw this over Patchy. Yeah, there's no moon tonight, so in the darkness we should... Uh, we should be okay. But let's, uh, we'll make our way around this way up towards the mining camp. Let's go. Well, here we go. Porter and Regina are in place. 
Joshua believes he's buffaloed Reddington and Ike, and Patchy is on the move. This will not end well. Find out in our next issue, The Violence You Make. The part of Joshua Young is played by Brent Rich. Porter Holt is played by Brad Smith. And your intrepid marshal is played by Chris Hussey. Deadlands and Savage Worlds are the property of Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Learn more about their great games at their website, pegink.com. And of course, thanks always to our friends at Fear the Boot. Support their Patreon at patreon.com slash fear the boot. Intro music provided by the Eagle Stone Collective. Additional music by Benedict Edwards. Sound effects by Plate Mail Games. And hear what they have to offer at platemailgames.com. Contact information for the cast as well as music links can be found in the notes on our website, youngandholt.com. If you enjoy these issues, please consider dispensing a lovely five-star review on wherever you do listen from. Please search for Fear the Boot Actual Play. It's very kindly appreciated. I'm Ernest Wick for the Tombstone Epitaph. And remember, you should never resign yourself to fate. That resignation might just be accepted. Before I left the farm, or the, the homestead out there, <laughs> uh, I was going to take some debris and set up on the broken fence line and basically fire some rounds off and at one point um, toss the toss the uh, bottle of rot gut that I had in the saddlebag still up in the air and fan the hammer at it that's kind of a symbolic departure I'm doing this I like how we just let the villain completely gear himself up, completely gear up his monstrosity, just so we can, we can walk into the fight yeah. at full power against us. I'm, uh, I'm fond of that as well. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, now, how are you supposed to have your monumental... Um, yeah. Jumping on his back and stuffing the dynamite in the visor moment if we didn't let him put it on. <laughs> and you got me, you make a good point. <laughs> uh, very true. <laughs>